call ahead for you tonight it was a bit of a challenge because my favorite my the easiest people for me to interview are people that I don't know at all because I want to find out the good stuff at the same time that you guys find out the good stuff but I kind of know and love Curtis a little bit but then I realized when I advertised this call that every single one of us is pretty sure we're Curtis's best friend like and I think we're all kind of right <laughs> in a way. And I want to delve into that and get the secrets of the trade from him. But I've got a couple of questions. Um, I did warn him that I'm mixing up the questions now because I'm clocking <laughs> that people have started watching the past interviews and they're preparing like, like really well polished. This was me when I was 10 answers. So we're not going there tonight. Curtis, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, and thanks for coming, everyone. I'm surprised uh, at a few things. <laughs> you can't, you can't you, you're also the most modest human being on earth, but like the amount of enthusiasm, you had more enthusiasm when I posted about your call than any of the publishers and most of the guests I've had. And I mean, I knew everyone loved you, but I didn't realize the extent of the feeling. And it's well-earned and well-deserved. Oh, guys, also remember, quirky questions are welcome. Type them in, and I will funnel them through toward the end of the call. Okay, so, Curtis. Yeah. You moved from Canada, and I want to hear more about that story later. I know you've already told me, but I do want to hear more of it because it's fascinating. And now it's, it, you would excuse us for thinking you're living this like glamorous expat lifestyle, life is perfect. Karen Common re Commons recently reminded me of an exercise that one of my favorite exercises, I used to do it for the people I mentored. Um, and it, it was the perfect day exercise. Whereas if you imagine your perfect day, right? from the minute you wake up, like where you wake up, what your place looks like, what your pet looks like, like run us through the first kind of like hour, hour and a half of your perfect day onto where you're gonna take off to go to whatever amazing glamorous work or whatever you do. Okay, cool. Well, it's not too far from what I, what I do, but um, I would wake up in a castle I guess that's pretty far from what I what I have. But I want a I want a big house. I want a mansion. I want like you know like filthy rich vibes when I wake up. And old then fat, old fashioned or modern, like turrets and gothic or um, industrial warehouse. Turrets and, loft. turrets and gothic, definitely. Okay. But with like you know a tricked out studio in the basement or in one of the towers. But somehow cool. it's like super soundproof. Um, and then of course I would walk my doggies because I love walking my doggies. I, I get up around this time anyway, and and we just walk in the dark, and it's it's the best time because nobody, you know, nobody else is up. There's no loud energies out there. Voluntarily. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're up. You're up, and you're walking. Yeah. yeah. So I'm walking them, and then I'll get back, um, and and then I'll like eat like a crazy meal, like that's healthy but like really good, and then. I won't have anyone telling me what to do and I'll be able to just answer my emails, maybe check social media and then get, get recording audiobooks. That, that would be, that's actually my dream day. <laughs> and so and how many days, cause you teach now, right? So yeah. tell us a little bit, um, for the sake of the audience members that are going to be watching this on YouTube in like a hundred years or so, tell us a little bit about your story. Like, um, Curtis growing up, you grew up in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Did you always get along with people? Did you get along with people in school? Did you have an easy relationship with people? No, I mean, like I grew up in a pretty, like, like a, a basic town, like a wonder bread town. And I mean, I left, I've been gone for 10 years now. Um, and I, and I love going back now, but, but I mean like growing up and being like 
checking other on every box, like literally every box. Um, it was kind of, it was a little different and I just, I didn't like it. You know, I didn't, I didn't have that much fun. And most of my friends were my cousins and stuff like that, or family members, um, or, or people who are a little older than me, which is why like my best friends now are always women who are about a couple decades older than me. Usually <laughs> it's just how it, it's just how it works out. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and yeah, it, it wasn't the greatest. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, so you grew up in Canada. Um, Craig has a question, but I'll fit that in when we get to where you are teaching now. So you grew okay. up in Canada and big dreams when you were young or living day by day? Yeah, I just, I only wanted to be an actor. And that was it. Like, since I was like one. I loved you. Were you watching two. old movies? Were, what, what do you think formed that <laughs> in you? My parents filmed everything I did. I love your parents. My parents never filmed a thing. My sister and I are very bitter about that <laughs> to this day. I love your parents. That is the loveliest thing. Yeah, they're um, here right now. They're pretty, they're pretty cute. <laughs> I'm now, you're not allowed to talk to the audience anymore because I'm now getting filled, um, peppered with I'm not... people that are saying, I'm his bestie. No, I'm his bestie. <laughs> 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 okay, so, um, okay, so you grew up, your parents filmed it. Do you still have those films? Can you, like, watch videos of your childhood? I don't know. I guess if you have, like, a VHS player. Oh, you've got yeah. to digitize them. Seriously. That's yeah. a treasure trove of memories. I know. It's just busy. I'm busy. Oh, <laughs> do it. Seriously, do it. I've got cassette tapes that I'm trying to digitize. Definitely do it. It would be worth it. That'd be lovely. And then when you're old and retired and sitting there crocheting or doing whatever retired people do, you can like <laughs> watch your childhood. I love that. Okay. So your parents filmed you. You knew you were going to be an actor. Drama in school? Yeah, of course. And yeah. and like that kind of surprised my parents because I don't know if I, I was like selectively shy kind of thing. So, but once I got on stage, then it would just be like, I would just bloom type thing or just explode and um and they were like oh wow cool but then when i was like oh i want to run away to new york and become an actor then they were like oh no 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 they weren't that impressed <laughs> yeah they were like you can't be broke and i was like huh were you but close now to I get your that... parents did you have a good relationship with them when you were young yeah for sure yeah 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 they're, they're great so were you so where was the first big move you made where did you go uh, in 2011, I, I spent the summer in Italy teaching like English and drama at, at summer camps and I just traveled to different cities and that's when I, when the travel bug kind of started and like the, the culture obsession, like different cultures obsession started. Were you scared packing your bags that first time? Yeah. Yeah. It was so freaky. I, I remember like I, I flew into Paris and I grew up like learning French in school cause you know, Canada. And I, I like, you know, I, I spoke whatever French I knew and they were all just so rude. Like things have changed. Like they're actually really nice now in France, <laughs> but they were so rude and they all hated me. And, <laughs> and I was just terrified and, but now, now it's all cool. And I'm sorry, it's not true that they respect you more and like you if you try to speak their language. No. <laughs> they get really pissed off at you and offended. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. So, okay, so did you have a time when you got there that you thought, oh, this is a mistake, I was homesick, I want to go back? Or were you just like so shocked by all the newness? Yeah, I was just shocked by the newness. And then I found that like when I go somewhere new, I feel more at home. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's, I just get bored easily. I don't, I don't know if you're like this because you're an expat too. I'm good for but, three months. And then after three months, I start to hate the new place I am desperately. And I spend the next three months on my new diet and planning where I'm going to move next until right. I got to London. London didn't get anything in the world. So there's no point. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you finally move somewhere you belong, I think, because you've been where you are now for a long time, haven't you? This is just my fourth year. But yeah, I, I, I was moving every two years. Yeah. Like full on moving to a new country or yeah, <laughs> at least a new city. 
Yeah. I know. And and finally, I'm just like, okay, just wouldn't it be nice to not spend a million dollars on moving again and just be there and not have to throw out all your stuff? And, and so finally, Hong Kong is that place. Yeah, I, I remember I would see if you told me that about London, when I went to move there, I would have hated you. I would have been like, I'm not going to stay here forever. I'm not done. <laughs> but you just kind of, you know. Okay, so how did it change you as a person? Compare Curtis that never left to Curtis that's traveled around the world. Um, I would just say it made me more more confident and it and it made me find out like kind of who I am what I like to do the stuff I care about because you know being growing up in Windsor like Windsor no offense to Windsor like thanks for you know housing me for 20 something years thanks but, for the memories <laughs> yeah but it's just it's a different energy over there it's it's kind of like everyone's like well hey, you gotta do this you gotta go to work you gotta grin and bear it as they yeah. say and um and finally when i moved overseas i was like oh like people have different ways of living people don't matter <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter like kind of what they think and um and, and i i stopped kind of obsessing what what people were were thinking about me or how how they were seeing me and i was just like well i'm just here to make a splash now it's freeing, isn't it? And it also, I think moving from a smaller place, you always miss. You miss the, the, you're no safer, but you miss the illusion of safety when you're in a smaller place, the comforts, there are a lot of comforts, but when you move mm -hmm. to a bigger place, because when you're in a smaller place, it's, it's a hard knock life. Yeah. Everything's going to be tough. Suck it up. That's what I've, I've taught. Work sucks. Of course, you're going to hate it. Shut mm -hmm. up. Everyone else does it. Why do you think you're any different? Right. But right. you move to a big city and they're the dreamers. And, you know, there are also people that are going to stab you in the street, but they're the dreamers and the shakers. And, you know, it's a freedom, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. completely up to you. It doesn't matter. You're not like you and your herd. Right. Yeah. So we got a couple of questions. Um, okay. okay. So this one fits in. Craig wants to know, and this one fits in because now you're teaching. How long are you planning to teach or is it year to year now? Because that's um, all part of your living. How long are you planning on staying where you are now? At least until I'm a permanent resident. So I need like, I think three more years. So at least until then. But I mean, teaching is my main thing and I don't know who I am without being a teacher. So like that, the idea of quitting really freaks me out. Uh, yeah, just cause I started when I was 23. Yeah, I just turned 23 and then I started teaching. So I don't know, like, what would I, what would it feel like? When what freaks you out like, about it? The feeling of lack of stability and money or what would you do with your day? What actual element freaks you out? Yeah, I guess sort of the money thing, because I, I know I would just like hustle harder at other stuff. But the idea that all those people that needed you, like, you know, your 300 students or all your colleagues who, you know, are, are from all around the world and you're using them constantly because you're stealing their accents. Like I work with Irish people, Scottish people, South African, <laughs> like everybody. And without that free resource. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. Like, I, w I would just feel like kind of um, just like reconfigured, dis yeah. discombobulated. Yeah. Yeah. But you're the man that's traveled to a different country every two years of your life. So you know that you're able to handle it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. so, so when you teach, right, what in all your years of teaching has been the most profound thing that you've noticed or that you've shared or that, because I know when you do something for a very long time, it's a job. A lot of it is mm -hmm. admin probably, but have you had moments that have changed you or that have touched you with the students? And my mother was a teacher and we used to let, we used to hate it actually. But every time you go to the grocery store, somebody would walk up going, 
Mrs. Achitali, you changed my life. Oh, God, <laughs> for old mm -hmm. students. But teachers genuinely shape the world. So have mm -hmm. you witnessed times and thought, wow, I've shaped the world? Um, yeah, to an extent. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I think that the, the times that made me made me feel that way were when when students either cried because I was leaving or when I felt that energy that I was kind of um, like sort of cultivating a community where people felt safe, uh, where people felt like they could take risks and be absolutely stupid uh, and, and yeah, and just go for it. So, so like that, it feels powerful and it, and, and it's something that once you have that, it, it's scary because it, it sort of isolates you. It's, it's like, you know, something, more that a lot of people don't know because a lot of people don't know how to how to how to control the room type thing but once you have that it's kind of like it's like you have this superpower <laughs> so those moments definitely and then of course yeah of course when they cry like i always felt bad when they cried this comes to this comes to the thing about your friends and all joking aside, somebody did say to me the other day and i have to be honest they said it kind of hurts our feelings when we're your favorite person on earth. And then the next time somebody's coming on next week, they're your favorite person on earth. And we thought we were <laughs> your favorite person on earth. But the thing is they genuinely are. I fall in love with each guest. Like I have a massive, I have a massive Curtis crush all week, right? <laughs> because like you couldn't, I don't think you could teach if you didn't find what's special about each student and feel that while you're interacting with them. And I suspect, I might be wrong about this, that that explains the amount of quote unquote friends you have. I'm just gonna say fan, quote unquote friends. They're not quote unquote friends, they are <laughs> friends. Yeah. Because you really listen to people and you hold space for them. And I think we feel that, like you genuinely like everyone right and make people feel good and it's not insincere it's like you genuinely like everyone yeah. so have you always just been a person that's gen generous in your feelings towards others or did you have to learn to do that um i i was always like really curious about things like i always i like i love learning new things investigating new things and so when when somebody you know, when someone's telling me about themselves, I'm, I'm actually interested because I'm like, that's awesome. I'm bored of me. I want to know about you. And then I'll probably steal something about you and, and use it for a character or put it in my, in an audio book. But, uh, I, I think when I was younger, I would get like hurt more because not everyone returns that. And now I'm just like, okay, some people just aren't, they're not in, they're not into be, they're not into being connected with others. And that's fine. That's just, not what I'm interested in anymore. So anyone who does say they're my friend, you like we connected, and I love that. But if it's just like that, you you use someone as a sounding board. I find that to be the most unattractive thing, ever. You know, when someone yeah. just is like blah 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 blah. Okay, bye. We should do this again. <laughs> like when there's I a coldness. That. I've met people and there's like yeah. a, there's there's nothing behind it. Mm -hmm. Like nothing like their mind's somewhere else and you can tell their mind is somewhere else like completely right. not where they are right right and we so could that's... get into the dark triad and talk about murderers and stuff but uh Ooh, I, I don't know if that's don't, don't i don't know if that's, the, that's <laughs> i know i know what we'll you like that up. <laughs> i know <laughs> but so but that actually brings me to another question and it actually yeah. ties in nicely with um a quirky question i have sent direct i don't think the person is shy about me saying their name but yes yeah, sent it direct so i'm just i'm going to be careful just in case <laughs> but what is the scariest thing that ever happened to you and that brings me to oh books. my god i want to know also along with the scariest thing that ever happened to you what genres yes. Do you get scared? Do you go into a fantasy world? Do you fall in love? What do you escape into, even if it's just reading and not narrating? So go ahead. Scary okay. and genres. All right. Oh my gosh, it's scary. Um, 
That's so hard. You're probably going to have to edit like 30 seconds. I'm like keeping in mind with the time. Right, Alex? It's like theater. It's like we can't have this dead time. Jeez. Um, so scariest. The, can we can we make it a little more specific? So scariest like physically or like mentally, emotionally? Because there's so many different versions of scary. What is scarier to you physically or mentally? I guess like probably mentally. Yeah. Okay. So mentally. Um, okay. So, well, I would say when I, before I moved to China and I broke up with my boyfriend, I did it in like the most awkward way and I hated it because I just wasn't, I wasn't getting what I wanted from him. And I was like, I'm leaving. I'm going to Asia. We'll never see each other again. Well, that was my plan. And what happened was, you know, we hung out and I'm like, oh, like, let's do a yoga video. And then we did a yoga video and then I'm like, oh, like you stink, go take a shower. And then he did. And when he did, I like packed up all my stuff. And when he came out, he's like, and, like, I, 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 I put it behind a door. And then when he came out, I was like, hey, why don't you like come over here and talk to me? He's like, what? I'm like, well, you better sit down. And he just, he's just like in a towel. And so he sits down and then I'm like, yeah, like, I don't want to be with you anymore. And I like said it with that awkward cadence too. I don't know. It was just so it, like, I, I don't, <laughs> I hate that version of me. And yeah. then he like cried and I was like, okay, like I gotta go. And then I, I like opened the door. I grabbed my bags from behind the door and he's like, were you just packing your things up? When oh, I was no. like, in the shower, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like I didn't want this to be awkward. And then I left. And but like, I didn't want this to be awkward. So I decided to make it the most yeah. awkward. But at least you stayed around. I stuck a note on the door saying, sold the furniture, got rid of the cats, moved to LA. So you were oh, much see, I can't nicer. do that. <laughs> but it, it, it's a painful thing. Like, I don't like letting people down. I don't like making people feel bad. And like, still now, I'm just like, huh. Like, I feel like I, I owe him like a million dollars and like a big but what apology. what else could you have done? Sometimes hard messages have to be delivered. You can't, yeah. because the thing is, in order for him not to be upset, you would have had to have stayed with him. And that could, wouldn't have been good for him. Right. So. It's just, uh, just some things, like, there's so much like, like pain in the world. And when, when, when you inflict yeah, more or I when know. you make it more, it just. It's like, what could I have done? But I'm, I'm not. You could have left a note on the door, I'm telling you. Because... <laughs> <laughs> it probably would have been better, but I wouldn't have got my stuff. Like, I yeah. Work hard. <laughs> I work hard for my stuff. How long had you been with him? Like a year and a half, maybe. It's, it, yeah. it is hard, but it, it's, I'm learning it's, it's a boundary that you have to have around yourself. And mm -hmm. you have to. And you have to say, no and the thing is is because i'm very good at making people happy like mm -hmm. i can't tell you how many people i broke up with and made them think it was their idea and right. that they were wow. like totally completely happy like literally when you're and i think you're like this too when you're able to make it okay for other people almost all the time mm -hmm. it's tempting to try to make it okay for them at the expense of giving the hard message but it's better i mean you wouldn't what do you do with your students when you have to give them bad news i like like about an audition they didn't get or yeah like they didn't get something or you know something you know is going to disappoint them you still well, tell them don't you yeah of course you tell them and you're kind of just like you know like it, it's okay to feel disappointed because it means you really cared about this yeah. And it, and, it, and you need to use this to motivate yourself and think, what do I really want? And go do it. Go figure it out. And that's how we deal with breakups. I've got another question. They're hard okay. and fast. We've got like 13 waiting for us. So what's a topic yeah. you wish you knew more about? Hmm. Probably just like other languages. Okay. Yeah, I would so... say probably just about other other languages or just being more like technically literate. Or maybe like a musical instrument like really well but yeah do you do something to teach yourself every day or do you not have time oh yeah i'm always, i'm always like learning e even like you know from my with my students I'll, I'll be learning or i'll just be like reading up on stuff or trying to to exercise a new skill i think that's 
that's probably one of the most fun things about our job, like about yeah. being narrators, is yeah. we get to like learn about stuff. Yeah. Now, Alex says, and it, it's a good question. Um, do you have a full day teaching? Because it's physically and emotionally demanding. I said that bit. Um, sorry, I'm kind of assuming she meant that as well. And then do you do Dracula hours for narration? How do you fit that in? So luckily we have like three months off each year. So I, I use that time to my advantage, but also weekends, weekends I do like, it's like a full work day for, for my narration. And then after school, at least three days a week, I do two to three hours. So and yeah, it's exhausting. Do you find teaching affects your, and this is again from Alex, does teaching affect your narration or the reverse? Both. Oh my gosh. Oh my yeah. God, my evil, my evil cat, sorry. Um, because like it, it makes me a better teacher because uh, you know, we have to know how to take care of ourselves and our voice and things like that. So I've like learned a lot about that and been able to impart on, on the students. But also, um, you know, I always draw inspiration from the people that are, are working with, with me. So it's like, it's like give and take. And you would think that being a teacher would make you good at nonfiction narration, but I'm, I'm terrified of that. I don't think I don't, I'm not ready for that. It's just like nonfiction yeah. to me is like doing homework. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will do it. I'm, I'm definitely not saying no to the jobs. But, um, so Ellen wants to know if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? And then we've got to go back because I, I screwed up Barbara's question. It was actually what made you physically scared. So we got to get that one too. Uh, I think, you know what, I'd probably live somewhere in, I would have multiple homes because I, I want like a home in around my parents and I want one in Europe, but I also want to have like a tropical getaway. And if I had those three things, then I would, I would be happy. I life. love that. I love that. I can see you on a beach with something with like umbrellas. Okay. Physically scariest thing you've ever done. Physically scary. Um, I, that's the thing. Like I don't, maybe on a plane when there's turbulence I, I don't i can't think of of anything big physically frightening are you sporty like are you like really confident sporty wise and body wise no. and powerful and I, I just i work out so like i i can like be healthy and look hot but i don't <laughs> do team sports there's too many <laughs> too many opportunities for injury and things like that and i just cannot yeah favorite are food. you getting are you getting sporty by the way I know you've been talking to people about yoga lately. Yeah, I, I did do eight minutes of it. It's so long. Like, it's so long. But I did get through eight minutes because I played a whole bunch of, like, coursework in the background. And I turned the sound down on the yoga. Coursework? Wait, why yeah, do you put like, on music? Yeah, no, music you think and everything. You don't really? want to waste time. You could be learning. See, but that's, that's like the energy though. Seriously. Like, so if you put on like music or even just like, I don't know, like vibrations or certain, yeah, like certain sound frequencies, if you put that on in the background, like that, that, that might change your mood because I find when I'm always just like learning stuff and like listening to podcasts or whatever, when I, when I'm exercising, it, it does change everything. It changes the energy promise. I, promise. I used to, I used to listen to music when I was walking and then I changed it to podcasts and it was better with music. But to be honest, I've got a, like a, ever since I, I'm not, I, sometimes it's nice to avoid your thoughts. <laughs> so <laughs> music gets me too emotional. So I like uh -huh. to, I don't like being emotional. So I like to like all those webcasts that you want to learn from and all the podcasts you mean to go back to. But I do need to like maybe mellow out a little bit because I, I read somewhere today that like you learn, if you're multitasking, you learn like maybe a millionth of what you should be learning. Right. Your brain isn't firing at all. Um, now, Ella, okay, Ella, I'm only going to ask, ask the first part of the question. Oh, I, in real life. Okay. 
What's your favorite food, and when do I get to squish you in real life? <laughs> um, my favorite <laughs> food will be whatever you make me when you get to squish me in real life. No, I'm kidding. But um, I Are love... you a hugging kind of person? You're a hugger? Yeah, and it's good for you? you. Like, huh? it has to be a real hug. It's got to be five seconds or more. Like, you need to get, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I might wear a sign if I ever do go to a live APAC. <laughs> I love you anyway. Thanks anyway. We'll catch up online. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm a hugger, but I'm like a boundaries hugger. So I'll I'll read your energy and I'll be like, "Are you okay if we hug?" Or I'll be like, "Or I just won't." If if I feel like if someone's like, you know, I don't want to hug, if they yeah. even give that vibe, I'm just like, I won't. But I mean, I'm very open. Like I'm everyone's best friend, but I've never been like a person except after COVID, now I'm really bad. Now I'm really bad. I actually mm. told some woman coming up the stairs the other day, could you please keep your distance? Oh my God, I've become that person, mm. that crazy old woman. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, um, in and out, stuff happens. Don't worry. No running down the street with someone. Oh, Barbara's very disappointed that you've never had to run down the street with someone chasing you. You've never been mugged in a park. I had <laughs> with to, all okay. the traveling, you've never had any close encounters. Yeah, actually, okay, I had to run away from some wild boars. What? Yeah, like I was with my dogs, and we were out at like Pause around... Pause on that for emphasis. Yeah. Wild boars, where were you? I was here in Hong Kong, like just like a minute away from my house. There's a lot of weird things here. It's like all the creatures from Resident Evil, plus a bunch of mythical creatures. It's It's freaky. That's but, really cool. Um, Maybe they're very friendly, and they only hurt you if you scare them. No, they were they were in a like they were in a, tr a triage. With, is that what you call it? like a, they were in a triangle formation? And <laughs> I just saw a shadow. I just saw a shadow over my shoulder, and I was with my dogs. And I turned around, and they like looked. And the moment they saw me, they just started running, and we started running. And and then I got like to the other side of the street, and luckily there was one of those separation things i don't have any work this is why i don't write the books uh one of those like traffic separation things yeah yeah and and so we got away but like i don't know what they were going to do barbara's like, got were... the best question she's got this like radar for <laughs> what's going to bring it and even you mr oh i've never been scared of anything <laughs> yeah that's brilliant <laughs> that's brilliant okay um clubhouse room on yoga and your favorite food oh we still don't know what your favorite food for real is oh. Ella's insisting it's so hard I really like I like pizza a lot like a good <laughs> pizza will make me very happy like in a good sorry everyone but like more of like an Americanized pizza why what's the no. opposite of Americanized like Italian style it's a little too flatbread for me it's a little too like it's healthier. It's, it's, yeah, it's... <laughs> not enough cheese. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't hit. It doesn't hit the spot the same, you know. What toppings? I'm thinking you're going to be receiving a pizza in the mail soon or something. <laughs> Ella's okay. getting very specific with her question. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, um, I I love it with like you got mozzarella cheese, but you also got the feta cheese on it too, and what? maybe some olives, maybe some. Yeah. I have, I have a segue here. What do you yeah. love the most? What do you want with all your heart? What do I want? Yeah. For I your life. just want to be. For your life. Like the thing you want the most. I just want to be like healthy and like, I'm not going to say happy because that's just like, you're not always going to be happy, but I want to be in charge. I don't want to have to report to anybody. I don't want to have to listen to anyone's dumb ideas. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like when someone's like, this is what you should be doing. This is what you have to do because you need to, because I'm the boss. I'm not saying anybody in particular, but I don't like that. But the Nate, your teaching job, you, you have, you run into that. Can I, can I say something? Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Being a freelancer, mm -hmm. I don't have a boss and I'm so happy. I'm now unemployable. I don't think I could ever have a boss again in my entire life because I think my filter where I don't tell them when I think they're stupid is gone. Right. <laughs> I think you, it's that freedom that you're talking about is a worthy endeavor. 
And I'm like half there. You're almost because I have that experience. I have that experience like on the weekends and after school. And I'm like, this is so cool. Yeah. And then when when I go to school and then someone says something, I'm like, we're not doing that. And then I'm kind of <laughs> like, uh, I mean, yes, yes, boss. So, yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's hard. It's that's the best thing in the entire world to me. I think that is the greatest achievement of my entire life. Never, mm -hmm. ever, ever, ever having to have somebody guide. I, I, I heard something somewhere where it's like, like, and this is nothing, there's nothing wrong with people doing what they have to do for a living, but there's certain jobs where your job is to help other people attain their dreams. Mm -hmm. But like your entire day, everything you do is working towards someone else's goals. Yeah. And I know. And, I mean, I'm happy to help people in a, of course I'll give you some great advice, but not, I don't want to wake up at eight in the morning and spend my precious time on someone else's goal. Yeah. It's like, you're basically like you're, you're a pawn, you yeah. know? And that's not, I don't think that's like a, a, a good, a good life. Yeah. Know? Oh, I love that. I love it's worthy. Oh, it's wonderful. But for now you've got your kids and, and it's a good, it's a good kind of compromise, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a good, yeah, it's a good safety blanket. And it's just, it's like a give and take thing. It's like, we both benefit from each other and you know, I get paid on time every month. So it's great. Like you can't, I can't pass that up right now. Well, but don't feel the pressure to pass because when you're in a job like that, I remember that horrible pressure that I'm wasting minutes of my life. I've got to mm -hmm. do something about this. Why am I like, you start to feel worse about yourself because you're not stopping it, but it comes to its end on its own, always in a natural mm -hmm. way. Y either you know when it's the time and you end it or they end it, but all the angst ahead of time, the power is completely with you. You don't feel like you have the power, I think, when you're in a job that's hard or you're ready to move on. You don't feel like the power is in you, especially my mm -hmm. old job when they would like scare you to death and say, you're going to die in the street. And it was the best job on earth. And without their pension, you won't survive a week and nobody else will hire you. And oh my God, at your age, you know, people, jobs can put you in a, in a scary place while they're saying they're secure. They're, when you're a child, people are telling you, what are you going to be when you grow up? But when you're an adult, mm -hmm. nobody asks you that anymore. Yeah. And like, there's no, there's never been a better time for like artists to make a living. And that's what I preach to my students every day. And, and I'm like, well, it, it's, it's like, there's a, a fear barrier or a fear threshold that I think holds us all back from what we really want to do. And when we yeah. have, when we have the option to do what we really want to do, then we just get even more scared and we go, we, you know, we burrow further into what is safe and what we don't necessarily love the most. But it all stems from, and I'm the queen of this, too much thinking. I could have saved myself so much angst. And you know what I learned a big lesson from? I highly recommend anyone listen to it. I didn't give it time because it was a podcast, but it was only four minutes each episode. And I thought, well, four minutes each episode. And you know how you hear about something and then years later you hear about it again and it doesn't land until you're ready for it to land. Um, Bonnie Gillespie mm -hmm. is a casting agent and she does a podcast for actors and she's got longer versions and everything, but she has one on Apple called The Work. And they're only four minute long sessions and I find them hugely inspiring because she focuses on mindset. But the one podcast, she had health issues and I might be oversimplifying this, but it's, it's been a game changer to me. Um, she had met with a somatic healer because she had health issues. They, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. And she was like, she had all the stories about what was wrong with her. Was this over? Was she not going to be able to keep going? And the stories, I'm well aware, are part of the problem. So I'm not saying you're in this position, but it's possible whatever you're feeling about the reasons you're still in the safety job part-time and you know to, you know the struggle we create when we make the decisions becomes part of the problem so 
the somatic woman told her, if you feel sick, you identify it, ask yourself, is this a sensation or a story? And oh my God, I've been kind of mm. doing that with like life for a yeah. week. And it's shocking, not just like wellness, but like if I worry or something happens or, you know, something's gone wrong or an email, is this an issue? Is this a sensation or is this a story? And guess mm -hmm. what? 80% of my day is made up of. Stories. It's, and the minute you start noticing it, it just feels stupid and you stop doing it like automatically. So everything doesn't have to be 20 years of therapy. It, sometimes it's just like, let's try a little less hard. It's true. You know, and, and sometimes like therapists, like no yeah. offense to therapists, but sometimes they like use like acting techniques and I'm like, uh, no, we do this in class. Like what, what, you know, like this is not, no, I'm not yeah. buying into this because, because then you're like, I already know this stuff, but not, I'm not pooing on therapy. That can but be useful. I think everything speaks to different people. Right. But you are right. Most of the things we're chasing, the health experts, the mental health, the podcast, we know most of it and we never ever listen to ourselves anymore because we're in like the age of Google. Google, yeah. it. Google's right. You know, the Google doctor or whatever, Google guru. So you, from everyone's outside, I might, might be frustrating to you thinking, you know, when am I going to move toward what I want? But from all of our eyes, it's like, wow, he's got a cushy setup. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's got actual training in his narration by the teaching and they say teaching is the quickest route to being a master uh, okay now i don't want to forget we've got a very important question um yeah jennifer never lets us down here ankle socks crew socks or no socks oh be careful well, of your answer to... here because we'll be listening <laughs> yeah so again it, it depends like i'm burning up right now so there are no socks like you're lucky that there's a shirt and and maybe pants <laughs> but Ankle socks, if, if, yeah, ankle socks always, even I like, I don't care. I'll even go to work. Like when I go to work, I have dress shoes on ankle socks. Seriously. I dare them to complain. I dare them to get mad at me. Yeah. Ankle I socks think... all the way. I don't, I don't do the long ones or anything or the, the crew I confess. Ones. I don't know which ones know those are. So did you get a typhoon? Yeah. It, it, did so you? I got to stay. Yeah. Like, so good things like typhoons happen sometimes so yesterday a typhoon happened and they were like you are not allowed to hold a class on zoom and i was like oh no so i got to you know wake up when i wanted to i got to work and you know set my schedule how i how i wanted to i got to meet with i don't know if she's still here but angela hey angela uh, but um angela's here yeah but there was a typhoon but it was just it was just like a little storm like it wasn't even bad it was really it wasn't bad at all. Okay, so let's just say J Jennifer says, although she detests ankle socks, she does respect your choice. Let's talk Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. You're like a king on Clubhouse. How does the lack of visual contact not drive you crazy? Because do you not notice there's a weird time delay when everyone talking? And like you have to sit there with these weird silences and then you don't want to interrupt them, but there's dead air all the time yeah it, it you it gets you need to get used to it really just like you're the queen of like youtube and zoom um clubhouse at first i was like you know why does everyone fucking hate me because they didn't say anything and and i was just like you know i would say something really profound or something that i really believed in and then i'd be like why why is there like, like no one would say anything so but sometimes just, it just happens. You're a bouncer on Clubhouse, dude. You're in the wrong room. Do you kick people out of your room? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I do all the time, actually. What do they have to do to get kicked out? Some people show up and they'll just be like, they'll be talking about whatever, you know, they'll be talking about themselves, or they will be talk. They'll be like, so I like audio books, and we're like, and instead of waiting so long. And actually, Peter does this a lot. He'll, he'll like, he'll either be mean to them or he'll just kick them out. But, um, 
Oh, maybe maybe we should edit that out. See, that's this is one of the points. But um, <laughs> okay, wait. Remember what time it is. Some people, it's just like it, it, sometimes you just got to be like, you know, babe, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong room. You got to go have fun somewhere else. You don't know what this is. Don't waste our time. People, you know, they set their their calendars. Some people RSVP to come to the the live chats, and I'm not here to waste anyone's time. I'm here to have like a good connection. Yeah. Yeah. But do you not? So no eye contact, right? So is okay. You don't have to dress up or anything. Is Clubhouse full of a bunch of introverts? Or am I wrong? That's how I imagine it. I imagine a bunch of people that are really quiet. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, there there are, are loud people too. People who like are microphone shouters. (laughs) <laughs> the, yeah, the, it, it's, you get all kinds of pockets of people, but you kind of find you find your little places in the audiobooks room founded by the lovely Anna Clements, who's an amazing goddess. The queen, um, yes. Yeah, the, the queen, yeah. Uh, you know, the, there are so many great rooms on there. And if you, if you set up a, a good conversation, narrators always show up. Like, they will be there no matter what. Yeah, and Alex it, says she's on Clubhouse, and I know she's not an introvert. <laughs> yeah yeah like there's a lot of extroverts on there and it's just like that's it's just an easy way to do professional development and okay. that's something i admire too about the narrative community is everyone is always excited about professional development we're always yeah. like oh yeah let's learn more yeah let's talk about audiobooks like i've never been part of an industry that's more that where there's more discourse about the industry like we just we're always talking about it. we're like audiobooks and yeah like let's wrap our head around this and also i know it's not you're not supposed to say this mm-hmm. i'm gonna say it anyway and if anyone sees it on youtube oh well yeah voiceover and audiobooks voiceover they're more business-like and competitive audiobooks mm-hmm. we're in it for the lesson like we just want to like learn learn more yeah. give us more information give us more books Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's it's every class if i bring up any new class to anyone i know on any forum like 70 of us have signed up for it immediately like we because we have so much extra time doing long form Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it's with the learners i think and the dreamers of the world you know you wouldn't stand there that long if you weren't i respect audiobook narrators like almost the most out of any actors out of any performers like to to be able to do long form and you know we don't get paid the commercial rates yeah or the corporate rates but we do it anyway it's because we love the job anyone can be like come on down to jc penny for like no i mean not anybody not you know what? No, don't no. cut that out i don't care because you know what <laughs> they're not going to watch this <laughs> the voiceover people aren't going to watch as far into this they maybe they will if they're trying to transition but then they'll realize that it's so much harder than than they think because a lot of them think oh okay like you're just you're that pocket well the other thing is the things that i found harder because i did voiceover before i became a narrator the things that i Mm -hmm. found harder go back to you about having a boss you have a client sitting there and and i quite liked i like the challenge of it but I don't think I would have liked it like seven years later, right? Like you have a client sitting there going, say that sentence, and I will, with a little more gusto. And then you say, and I will. Okay, now say it with more gusto and more of this, and like a hundred times. Yeah. Like the one here? Oh my God. Here, because I'll go into the studio here and you'll have... um you'll have like the engineer and you'll be with them and then they'll they'll send a rep from the company usually who speaks like a little english and then there will be someone shouting in cantonese over the phone <laughs> and you hear it all and you're like oh my god and then so they shout to the assistant the assistant says uh uh can you have it more like this and i'm like okay and then they shout even louder and they go <laughs> okay we're happy and i'm like really are you sure <laughs> that doesn't sound like happy where i come from it, it feels, it's very satisfying when they are happy. Yeah. But but it's just like repeating the same sentence 70 times and you're just thinking, I want to tell a story. I mean, there's, it's not mm-hmm. all, you know, 
I'm have I've got a big lesson for myself. I am now if I do a nonfiction book, I'm giving myself the time and a half. Like I'm counting it, my normal formula, how many minutes it'll take, and I'm adding another half each hour to it. For because, nonfiction specifically. Yeah, for nonfiction. Oh. Because I can do all of the numbers and all crunch every number on earth, but there's the boredom factor. There's yeah. the and and I'm not saying I find nonfiction boring. Most of it, I'm I'm saying <laughs> that you're not losing yourself in the story, are you? You know, you're you're, mm -hmm. you're not reliving your 20 year old first love <laughs> or <laughs> or murdering you know people. So I need that extra. You know. I have no idea. You've got me going off on a tangent. You've done that. Curtis is really interested in you. Tell me your life story. And I'm supposed to be interviewing you. Okay. So Curtis. Yeah. So you're going to yes. be free. You've got this wonderful life already. How many dogs do you have? Two dogs and two cats. Oh. And a little apartment. That. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> so when you you you'll but you'll soon have a bigger place do that exercise every day barbara share karen commons talks about it she she reminded me it's a okay so one last question actually two last mm -hmm. questions because we got to end you on time i know you've got very important meetings to get to um this is one if 14 year old curtis walked into your life right now what would he think he'd be like holy shit would he be happy? he'd be very impressed yeah. Like, and he, and he would be like, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know I could do that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, that. totally. Okay. So people on YouTube in a hundred years watching this video, what would you like them to leave and always remember about you or learn from this call? Or what would you like to tell them that you wish somebody had told you in the beginning? So I, I know that you... Well, I'm getting like deja vu. What the heck did you do to me? <laughs> witchcraft. Um, but uh, I, I, I had an idea because I knew you were going to ask this question, but I'm changing that based on what we talked about. And I think that <laughs> you, really you're, you're, only, you're only as special as you make other people feel. And I think that everyone needs to keep that in mind that, you know, living life, it's about the connections you make and exchanging the energy and having experiences together, not not on your own, not being on a pedestal, not separating yourself, but actually making a connection and making other people feel good. And not, ju not just being like, I'm going to make you feel special, but be making people feel welcome, making them feel positive. And when they leave being like, hey, that was, that was nice. And that's it. I think that pretty much sums Curtis up in a nutshell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and we and we're freezing again. But it's okay because we've we've reached we've reached the end. I think so. Um, that's wonderful. Honestly, I think, I think this... it's Curtis. This has been a wonderful oh, call. I knew it would you. be. I'm so glad we finally got a chance to make this happen. Um, your fans. Well, thank you for asking me too. Like that. You can look at the audience now. They're glowing with shiny, sparkly eyes, and clapping for their friend. It's uh, it's not a bad legacy to have as many good dear caring friends as you do and i think there, uh, yeah. there's a reason you have them because you're a I, good dear caring friend and i love all you so much like you're some of my best friends in the world and the fact that we never met in person is kind of freaky did i just freeze again you did you did but we could hear you <laughs> and you had a very carry so, grant okay kind good of profile it's so again. frustrating <laughs> but oh, you're okay because you're well, a million miles nice. away so wi-fi and typhoons probably don't mix we have like the best wi-fi in the world though it's just it's doing this maybe the for some reason to the cables outside probably <laughs> or maybe or maybe it's another typhoon day I, I i would love to i would love to stay home and have the day that i want to have <laughs> well soon all your days will be the days you want to have here's us sending you the energy for that thanks so much curtis you're wonderful thank you, everyone. and thank you everyone for joining yeah thank bye, you guys. for showing up live bye i know amazing audience you're like seriously you're like the lady gaga of the audiobook industry everyone loves you and you're frozen again so <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going to let you go because it's like being on Clubhouse yeah, with no eye contact. It freaks me out. Right. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.